In end host mode, they're still switching in the fabric interconnects. Let's focus on the A side fabric interconnect. Let's draw two upstream switches connected via port channels and three blades, which will label server 1, server 2, and server 3. The service profiles have a single VNIC connected to V Ethernet interfaces via the IOM and server links as discussed. And the V Ethernet interfaces are pinned to two port channels. Each server has a single vSwitch. The vSwitch VM NICs are attached to the server's profile vNICs. We'll draw some port groups with VLAN 100 for server 1 and server 2, and on server 3 we'll have two port groups, one with VLAN 100 and the other with VLAN 200. We'll draw some VMs and attach the VM vNICs to the port groups like this. The VM vNICs have MAC addresses A, B, C, D, and E. Remember, no spanning tree in end host mode. Traffic between VMs in the same VLAN on the same vSwitch will be switched by the server. The vSwitch in server 1 knows about MAC addresses A and B and switches traffic between VM1 and VM2. Traffic between VMs in the same VLAN on different servers will be switched by the fabric interconnect. The fabric interconnect will learn the MAC addresses inside the UCS environment, but not MAC addresses that are upstream. We do pinning to the uplinks and switching between the server links. Traffic to unknown unicast addresses will be forwarded up the pinned uplink. Inbound traffic to a MAC address will only be accepted on the pinned uplink. This is called reverse path forwarding. The fabric interconnects will never forward traffic received on one uplink out another uplink. Deja vu. Don't accept inbound traffic from one of our own MAC addresses. Traffic between VMs in different VLANs always goes upstream to a Layer 3 device. Outbound multicasts are flooded internally into the pinned uplink. A single link is designated as the broadcast listener. Broadcast traffic is only accepted on that link. All of these things together allow us to connect to the upstream switches in end host mode, just like we were a big ESXi server. We can run without the spanning tree and have all of our links active. Let's look at traffic flow with two fabric interconnects. We'll draw 6100A and 6100B, each connected to a separate switch using port channels. We'll have two servers, each with two service profile VNICs, with one connected to the A side and the other connected to the B side. Inside each server will be a V switch with two VM NICs connected to the service profile VNICs. We'll have a single port group on each vSwitch in VLAN 100. We'll put two VMs on each server. Traffic between VM1 and VM2 will be switched on server 1. Question. How do frames flow between VM1 and VM3? Between VM2 and VM3? It depends on the NIC teaming policy. To understand how traffic flows, we need to know the NIC teaming configuration. Let's look at vPort ID or MAC address hash NIC teaming. For both of these, our VM vNICs end up being pinned to particular service profile vNICs. Traffic between VM1 and VM3 will be switched on Fabric Interconnect A. Traffic between VM2 and VM3 will be switched upstream. As traffic flows, the fabric interconnects and upstream switches will learn the MAC addresses of the VMs. Switching the traffic upstream does not present a latency problem because the links are 10 gig and the switching times are small, 0.8 microseconds in the IOMs and 3 microseconds in the fabric interconnects. What happens if we use IP hash NIC teaming? Some flows from VM1 will go upstream via fabric interconnect A and others via Fabric Interconnect B. MAC address A will flap between switch ports. That's never a good thing. IP hash NIC teaming is a bad idea for UCS B-Series servers. Let's go back.
back and look at traffic flow again. We know that traffic between some VMs, even in the same VLAN, will flow upstream and across the peer link between switch 1 and switch 2. Traffic to VMs will also flow across the peer links. Traffic to VM2 and VM4 on switch 1, and traffic to VM1 and VM3 on switch 2. We could end up with excessive peer link traffic if we're not careful. To address this, our first priority is to connect each Fabric Interconnect to both upstream switches. If we only have two uplinks per Fabric Interconnect and no VPC, we should connect them like this. If we have four uplinks but no VPC, we should port channel the uplinks like this. The recommended topology is to use VPC to connect to the upstream switches. Two final things to discuss fabric failover, and pass-through switching. In this drawing, we have our two 6100s connected to two upstream switches. We have a single server with two service profile VNICs. The VNICs are configured for fabric failover. That means that if there is a failure in one fabric, the VNIX will switch to using the other fabric. For example, if the server link for VEthernet0 on 6100A fails, then the traffic will be rerouted to fabric B. The service profile VNIX will stay up. The failover will take 1 to 2 seconds, and the 6100B will send GARPs for the MAC addresses that were on the 6100A to speed network convergence. Pass-through switching, otherwise known as hardware VN link or VMFX, allows service profile VNICs to be created dynamically for each VM VNIC. Each VM VNIC has its own service profile VNIC. Fabric failover is automatically enabled for these VNICs. With VMFX, the server does no switching. All switching is done on the fabric interconnects. VMFX also has many other useful features, but they're not typically used for UC on UCS. Thanks for watching.